The hadith states, on the 23rd of the month of Ramadan, there will be a grand call in the heavens. Jibra'il will make that announcement that the Mahdi has now reappeared or is about to reappear. People are getting ready. Go three months forward on the night of Ashura in Masjid al-Haram, the Imam السلام, is waiting for the 313 companions to gather. All the 313 from around the world, they gather in Masjid al-Haram. Allah takes them there. He shows them how to get there on Laylat Ashura. Now Jaysh al-Sufyani, the Sufyani and the evil powers, they're looking for the Mahdi. They're wa waiting for him. Any minute he's going to leave, you know, come out because Jibra'il made that call. The Imam is in Mecca. He prays Maghrib and Asha' Jama'ah with the 313. Then, Imam al-Baqir tells us this, then he puts his back towards the Kaaba to face the crowd and he gives a speech. Even the text of the speech, brothers and sisters, has been documented in our books. Imam al-Baqir says what the Mahdi will say, what he will say to the world, read his speeches, they're beautiful, they give you hope, they give you faith. And then towards the end of his speech, the Imam salam. He reminds the world of his grandfather Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Ala ya ahl al alam, ana al samsam al muntaqim. Ala ya ahl al alam, inna jaddi al Hussein qutla atshana. He says this to the world. So the 313 are now surrounding the Imam. His movement begins. Who hears? Sufyani. Sufyani hears that the Mahdi has now emerged from Mecca. Sufyani sends an army of 70,000 people, an army of 70,000 strong men to go and fight the Mahdi. They come from the Syrian region, they go south to Medina. So they hear the Mahdi has appeared where? Mecca. Mecca is where to Medina? It's to the south of Medina. So the Sufyani sends his powerful army and he tells them go to Mecca and assassinate the Mahdi. That 70,000 strong army leaves Medina. By the way, you know what they do in Medina? They desecrate the city. There will be some challenging days. The hadith states anyone whose name is Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein will be massacred by the army of Sufyani. Allahu Akbar. They're going south to Mecca. They reach an area called Bayda. It's not too far from Medina. One day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi was standing on Bayda, the land of Bayda. He looked at the land and he cried. He told his companions, my companions, one day an army here in Bayda will try to go and kill the Mahdi when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy them. How does Allah destroy them? Allah sends Jibra'il to that land called Bayda, you have 70,000 of the army of Sufyani. With his wings, Jibra'il with his wings, he splits the ground open, the, the, the ground swallows the 70,000. Al-Khasfu bil Bayda, that is one of the signs of the reappearance of Imam al-Mahdi. And it is a definite sign, min al-alamat al hatmiya So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets, gets rid of that army. So Imam al-Mahdi ajjalallahu ta'ala faraja. He waits the following day, which is now the day of Ashura. He waits for 10,000 supporters. That is the next inner circle of the Imam. The, th the very close ones are 313. And 50 of the 313 are women, by the way. 50 of them are women. The Imam waits for his next second circle of supporters, which are 10,000. Once they join, these people are very faithful, but not as high as the 313. They come, they join the Imam, the Imam leaves Mecca. He goes north, now the army of Sufyani is no longer in his way. So the Imam السلام, goes north and then he makes a northeast turn towards Iraq. On his way to Iraq, the armies of Yamani and Khurasani join the Imam They come, they pledge him allegiance. The Imam first goes to Karbala, something emotional happens in Karbala, not to mention it now. He goes to the grave of Imam al-Hussein 
and he showed some of the oppression that happened to Imam al Hussein. Then he goes north to Kufa because the headquarters, the capital of the government of Imam al Mahdi is in Kufa. That's the capital of the government of Imam Ali salam also. So he goes to Kufa, he establishes his government there. Then the Imam Ta'ala Farajah is given instructions by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go to Palestine. So the Imam departs with his companions and they go towards Palestine. On his way, as Sufyani tries to stop the Imam, he fails to stop the Imam. Allah grants him victory, he goes to Palestine and the Imam liberates Palestine from occupying forces. We don't exactly know who they are. The hadith does not specify who they are, but it says occupying, occupying forces in Palestine. The Imam will liberate Palestine from them. Now up until this point, the non-Muslim world is just watching. They don't get involved yet. Yes, some Muslims like the Sufyani and others, so-called Muslims, terrorists, they try to stop the Imam. But the Christian world, the non-Muslim world is just observing here. They're like, you know, this is a Muslim thing, let's not get involved. When Imam al-Mahdi liberates Palestine, now the lobbies start mobilizing Western powers or non-Muslim powers and they come to fight the Mahdi. They mobilize their armies, they come to Palestine, they want to fight the Mahdi now. Imagine this scene, the whole world is watching, massive armies are just about to fight the Imam in Palestine. Right before the war starts, something miraculous happens. What happens? Suddenly, Isa ibn Maryam descends from the heavens with 800 supporters, 800 of his companions. He descends from the heavens and he comes down. Now initially it seems the Christians are confused. On whose side is he? Maybe now he came so we can get rid of this Mahdi. Some of them do think that, even until today, listen to some of their priests, they talk about the Mahdi being the Antichrist. Yes, I've seen a speech by a very influential reverend who says this Mahdi is the Antichrist whom Jesus will kill. So they have this idea. So Isa salam comes, the world is now anxious, what's going to happen? So the Christians think he's going to side with them to kill the Mahdi. They're observing. Isa salam walks to Al-Imam Al-Mahdi It's the time of Salah now. In Jerusalem, in Palestine, in Bayt Al-Maqdis. What happens? Al-Imam Al-Mahdi tells him, Ya Ruh Allah, out of humbleness, he tells him, lead the prayer. Isa salam puts his hand on the shoulder of the Mahdi and he says, you have a greater right to it, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, you lead the prayer. Al-Mahdi stands, Allahu Akbar, Isa ibn Maryam stands before him and he prays behind him. When the Christian world sees Jesus praying behind the Mahdi, they all join forces to support Al-Imam Al-Mahdi.